Hello, so we're back and this time we have an interesting job. We have a data recovery job from an iPod. Now let's check the customer email. The customer is a computer business. The customer is saying, client of mine has brought an older iPod touch. She is desperate to get the content off. The iPod doesn't switch on, no charging symbol when plugged in, just straight dead. Now, on a data recovery job, the first thing what uh, we have to find is the customer budget because the, the data recovery job is paid per hour of labor. And of course, uh, the next question was the customer budget. And they said uh, she, because it's, it's a she, she has a budget of £160. So we can spend about one hour and a half trying to fix this iPod. If we, if, we, if we cannot fix an hour and a half, we are charging nothing. Okay, we have a power meter here. And the power meter is good. We can uh, test it on my phone. And you can see the charging sign. So the power meter and cable is okay. Plug in onto the iPod. And you can see the current is going slightly up. And you can see jumping current. And we know jumping current. Then is something short on the motherboard. You know that. So it's taking nearly no current, but even that less current what it's taking uh, is jumping. So we have to open the iPod and uh, try to fix it in order for the customer to recover the data. We do have like a deep scratch on the screen here. Uh, very possible the screen will get cracked uh, when uh, I'll try to open. Hopefully not. But, you know, that's the risk. I haven't fixed iPods from probably more than six years. So I'm going to lower the temperature to 130 degrees. Yeah, 130 degrees. Here we have some uh, sticky thingy, you know. 130. Yeah, yeah, that's that's fine. That's fine. Uh, let's try to open the iPod. We need some special tools here. Let's be sure we are uh, keeping hot the the iPod. And we are moving around slowly. Yeah, almost done. It was a little bit harder because it has a bent here, you can see, it has a bent inside the frame. But we are fine. Now the most common fold on iPod Touch I found is actually water damage. And the screen is out. But you know what? This looks perfectly clean. Check inside. Hmm? We can't see any sign of liquid damage. Now let's take the screws out. Now we can take the metal frame out. Now actually we have one more screw. Yeah, we are fine now. Yeah, no sign of liquid damage. Uh, nothing, I mean, it's perfectly clean. So what I'm going to try, yeah? We're going to try a trick. I want access to the battery. That's what I want. Let me go under the microscope. And the battery is here. Perfect. Now, in order to hard reset iPod Touch, you have to short the battery. Yeah, the battery is solder. I know it sucks, but there's no other way. So here and here, we have nothing. Okay, there is nothing to short. Okay. Uh, we have to find out the ground. So we're going to try to push some current into the battery. And yeah, it is possible that it will fix the problem. So this is minus, this is plus, okay? Power supply, let's lower the voltage to about 4 volts, a little bit of current. Now, I seen yesterday, 
Yeah, I think yesterday. Uh, I see a mistake. Uh, you know, probably I should do a mistake with what I'm seeing on YouTube. Now, you have plus and minus. We checked, and we know it's minus here, right? But you can't be sure. That's the thing. So I seen, actually, I said that was an iPhone uh, video. Uh, you are not sure. And it's not about you not being sure, but your brain, you know, like can play with, uh, you know, the, the, the things you remember. But in this case, just to be sure, yeah, you cannot do a mistake in this way. Just to be sure, always come with the minus, not at the battery connector. Come with the minus at the ground. In this way, you cannot go wrong. I mean, if I go wrong, I'm coming here. Oh, what happened? It's short because here is ground. You can see? Then nothing happened. I cannot burn it. But if you come and you twist plus and minus onto the battery connector with a battery at zero volts, it is possible you can burn uh, the board. So um, I have ground there and I have plus here, right? Yeah. And the battery is charging with 500 milliamps. The voltage is 3.1. And it's going up. I can only hope this current is taken by the battery and not actually by the board, by something shorter on the board. 3.3. .3. I can see the voltage is going up. Let's check the voltage to see what is happening with the voltage. Going quickly to zero or not? Because we can have like a short on the motherboard. So the battery has 3 volts, it's not short on the motherboard, you can see, it's stable 3 volts, so the battery is, uh, the board is not discharging the battery. Good, on this case, I'm going to raise the current a little bit. 1.1, uh, let me raise the current a little bit more. And we are pushing 1.7 amps onto the battery. We know the board is reset because the, the battery was zero volts. We have like four volts. Let me raise the current. And now the battery is taking 2.2 amps, you can see. And the current is going down because the max voltage I set up, I set up there is 4.2 volts, which uh, it's a fully charged lithium cell. Okay, so on this moment, I want to do a test because it is possible uh, for the iPod uh, to start working. So we have the meter here. Plug in the charger, 0 0.7 amps, and we have the charging sign. Just to understand, uh, just because... Uh, it was looking like a dead dipod with jumping current. So what was that jumping current? Jumping current was the charging circuit trying to bring the battery to a point where uh, the iPod, uh, it will charge. Now you'll ask, okay, sorry, but why you took this job as a data recovery? This is a basic repair. Now, data recovery jobs are different. So on a normal, lap, on a normal job, you know, I'm... Uh, I'm working, I'm working fast, I'm working with the power supply, I do apply some risk on the, onto the job, you know, playing with power supply on the, onto the board, trying to diagnose. Now on a data recovery job, you can't do something like that. So your, your first concern is to not create more damage, yeah? Because maybe I cannot fix it, but someone else can. So whatever you do on the board, you take your time, you pull up a schematic and you go slowly, you move forward without, uh, you know, putting that motherboard in the risk to create more damage. So the iPod is coming on, it's taking like 900 milliamps. And they have picture, but why the iPod is reset? That's crazy. The customer said, oh yeah, it has a passcode. Yeah, yeah. no, no, no. No, no, it's not reset. It has a passcode there. So what do you think? Are data recovery jobs hard? You know what? From my experience, but well, that's my experience. Usually I tell the customer, <clears throat> that's the price per hour. But usually, you know, the data recovery jobs are done under one hour. I did have an iPhone. I worked like 10 hours for that job. And... Um, 
And yeah, that, that was the only one. It was the iPhone SE. You remember I uploaded a video about that iPhone. And the iPhone was a tricky job because the iPhone actually was working, but not the touch screen. No, was working and restarting because uh, because some track was interrupted. You remember? Yeah, some data line. Anyway, when you have a job like that and you have a phone coming on even for three minutes, because that, that was the issue with that one, was coming on for three minutes. And indeed, you know, was soldering one eye wire and you fix the problem, but you cannot carry repair from a device. You can recover the data. You can't do it. Yeah, not on this business, on data recovery. And after 10 hours, I, you know, recovered the file by file, you know, having the phone restarting like every three minutes. And after that, indeed, I fixed it in about uh, five minutes. <laughs> insane, insane. That's the data recovery jobs. Okay, so everything is working fine. You know, I hate power meters. They are trying to save energy on the screen, you know, they're turning the, the, the backlight, you know, low or off. And this, this is it's not the first one. Even this one is doing exactly the same. I mean, it's a tool. You can't have, like, you know, power saving on a tool. Crazy. So the iPod is taking, like, uh, 0 0.6, 0 0.7 amps. We have green battery. If we are unplug unplugging the charger, we can see the iPod, is, it is on. Yeah, the touch screen is working. Everything is fine. Okay, so I'm going to stop now. I'm happy I helped the customer so the customer can recover the data. Have in mind, if you have this kind of job and it's looking like actually like a very bad job, like, you know, we are jumping current, it can actually be very simple, like this one. So uh, thank you for watching. You know, like, subscribe if you like the video. And see you on the next one. Bye. Hey. If you find my content being helpful, don't forget you can support this channel by pressing the join button and you can get instantly access to our members only cool collection and uh, Discord private channels for support with your repairs. Also, you can have a look on our uh, United Kingdom uh, eBay where you can find some cool and unique products. United States eBay store or our Patreon page. Thank you.